Oh my God, it finally happened. Just a few weeks ago, Nikola's official legal response to the DOJ and SEC has been made public. And the admissions in this document are seriously next level hilarious. I've been following this scandal since the beginning. I started making videos on why Nikola was a scam back in mid 2020. And even I didn't know some of the stuff that's been made public in these documents. We have quotes from employees and from the board of directors in response to founder Trevor Milton's statements, emails, contracts, and a line-by-line -line breakdown of all the claims that he made that were completely and entirely false. If you're a Nikola investor or a fan of Nikola, you need to watch this video because some of the implications will still apply to this day. All right, let's take a look at the doc itself. This right here is going to be our roadmap, the overview of statements. This page has 12 critical points made by Trevor Milton and Nikola about their capabilities and then the responses from the employees and executives and it is an absolute gold mine of information and if you didn't think Nikola was full of shit before after you see this document you without a doubt will and remember this is coming from their legal team and is a presentation to the DOJ and SEC, meaning they're trying to put things in the best light possible. And before you go and say that clearly this was all Trevor Milton's doing because we see just how much he's taking the lead on, don't give the rest of the team a free pass. Remember that Milton is telling these things to the public, and as we're about to see, the rest of the team at Nikola knows he's intentionally lying to make Nikola look like they're much farther along than they actually are. And yet, we didn't have anyone break ranks and get the truth out to the public. This whole scandal really didn't go mainstream until the short seller Hindenburg came out with their report and blew the lid off the whole operation. It's not as if Milton was doing everything in secret. By its very nature, it was a public con. And that's something that many people at Nikola let happen. And many of those employees are still working there today. For those of you that don't know, for reasons we'll get into in this video and others, Nikola was ultimately fined $125 million by the SEC for misleading investors about their products and company. 125 million might sound like a lot, but then you remember that at its peak, Nikola was valued at over $30 billion, which at the time was more than Ford. And a major reason they hit that ridiculously high valuation was because they were misleading the investors. And Trevor Milton himself at his peak was worth nearly $9 billion personally. So when you look at that $125 million dollar fine through that lens, it seems remarkably tiny. Then we have to think about the ramifications. If we're hypothetically rewarding companies billions of dollars for intentionally deceiving investors and only penalizing them a few million if they get caught, game theory would seem to indicate that the winning most move for a startup would be to trick the public, at least for long enough to make the product viable. This get rich quick scheme is happening all the time and the only real loser here is the retail retail investor who got tricked into thinking the business was legit. As we'll see in a second, Nikola was giving much more truthful information to their institutional investor base, whereas the retail investors and the public, they were getting fed bullshit. We'll get more into this later. Let's get started with the legal presentation. Point one is their headquarter power source, and it's in response to this quote from Milton. We have 3.5 megawatts of solar up on the roof producing 18 megawatts of energy a day in our headquarters. And in response to that, Kim Bray the CFO says this assertion is completely false. Interviewees consistently stated that Nikola's headquarters did not have solar panels on its roof at this time and that there are still no solar panels on the roof. Okay, so lie number one confirmed. Nikola did not have solar panels on their headquarter roof providing 18 megawatts of energy a day. We already knew that, but it's good to hear them admit it publicly. Next up, their natural gas wells. Nikola themselves said that Nikola owns the rights to its own natural gas wells along with the Nikola One fleet that transports the natural gas from the wells to the stations. With seven wells on a single property, Nikola can pump out millions of gallons of clean natural gas each day. Nikola plans on having more than five well sites for redundancy throughout the United States. And they said in a tweet that they use those wells as backups for their solar hydrogen production. The truth, however, is that they don't. When Milton's brother Travis was interviewed, he said he looked at the property with seven wells on site, but Nikola never purchased the property or any other natural gas wells. And then we have CFO Kim Brady saying he's unaware of any natural gas wells owned by Nikola. So that's another lie from Milton. He's two for two on deceiving the public, but it gets even better. Let's keep going.
going. Number three, we have hydrogen production. And we have Milton saying that they can produce over a thousand kilograms of hydrogen a day on site, which is operational, and that their cost is down to $3 per kilogram, whereas typically hydrogen costs around $16 per kilogram these days. In response to those statements, Nikola employees said, Nikola has never produced hydrogen. Their VP of technology development and strategy gave one of my favorite quotes of all time, which is, Milton tends to mix up we plan to have with we have when speaking in public. Truer words were never spoken. Then we have CEO Mark Russell saying that Milton's statement is indefensible and CFO Kim Brady again saying that this statement is false. Again, another lie that has no basis in reality. Number four regarding their development of their major components where Milton said that all the major components are done in house, including the batteries, inverters, software, controls, infotainment, over the air, etc. In response to those statements, Nikola's chief engineer said, Nikola does not currently develop any components on its own. And again, we have CFO Kim Brady saying, Nikola aspires to build components in-house, but does not do so at present. Seems like another case of Milton using the we have instead of we plan to have, which again deceives the public and investors. All right, we're gonna start skipping to some more interesting admissions to keep this video as short as possible. The next really important one is with regards to their battery development, where Milton said, we do, however, make everything in our battery. All the cooling, the thermal, the battery management system, the software, the hardware, everything except for the cell. So that's Milton's take. Let's see what the rest of the crew says. The global head of vehicle engineering said, virtually all of the batteries for vehicles are built with partners. The CLO said, Milton worked hard to ensure that Romeo could never say that its batteries were in Nikola's trucks. And Kim Brady said, Nikola does not make its own batteries in-house. No one can say they have their own battery other than maybe Tesla. Nikola never told institutional investors that it makes its own batteries. Rather, it told them the truth, namely that Nikola buys cells and works with third parties to build its modules. Milton, quote, had paranoia about investors knowing that, even after numerous attempts to explain to him that investors understood it already. He always played a bit of cloak and dagger regarding battery technology. For example, he didn't want to disclose Nikola's relationship with Romeo. And then an internal email between Milton and corporate counsel, he said, we need to make sure we have a clause specifically stating they shall never represent their batteries are on our trucks without our written permission, which we will never give. I don't want the image issue with our investors. And this is, in my opinion, one of the more damning admissions because we can see that it's not just that he's trying to deceive the public about things that they're not yet capable of, but they're going to be capable of eventually. This is Milton showing that they're actively trying to deceive the public about something that they never intend to make in-house. But this isn't the end of the battery lies. The next section about their game-changing battery tech gives us some much needed closure. I made quite a few videos on this exact subject because it was so ridiculous, and now we finally have the answer. Remember when Nikola made these statements? They're still up on their website if you want to check them out. Technology encompasses world's first freestanding self-supported electrode with a cathode that has four times the energy density of lithium ion. That'll cost half what lithium ion battery costs today and weigh 40% less. I mean, these claims are more than just too good to be true and everybody knew it, but that didn't stop Nikola from making the claims. But listen to what they say now that their feet are actually being held to the fire. Kim Brady says the whole statement was an embellishment and fiction at the time, but it may be true in 10 years if everything goes perfectly. And then their CLO Worthen says, Nikola did not and still does not have commercializable battery technology. Milton's statements to the contrary were a <laughs> terrible and stupid idea and Worthen told him not to make the statement. Yet another example of Milton lying and deceiving the public. Then they were caught lying about having a functional zero emission truck in 2016, no surprise there. Then at the unveiling of the Nikola One when Milton said the truck was real and wasn't a pusher, AKA saying the truck is fully functioning and can drive. Well, this is pretty funny. CFO Brady said it was a pusher and that it wasn't fully functional. And so do a bunch of other employees. Then with the Nikola One in Motion video where they filmed a commercial that made it look like their truck was driving along when really they just towed it up to the top of a hill and then rolled it down. We get some more fun quotes. Nikola's global head of marketing said the video is misleading and a number of employees said they were uncomfortable with saying the truck was in motion when they knew it wasn't driving. 
Then for the last point in the brief, let's look at their production timeline where Milton said, we have five of them coming off the assembly line right now in Ulm, Germany. In response to that, the global head of vehicle engineering said, characterization of the trucks as fully built was inaccurate. So here we have definitive proof from employees of the company itself about tons of lies that Milton told the public, but that's not all we have. This is what kills me. The report goes on to give these statements about Milton's character saying that he has a man behavior and a distorted perception of the truth, which I completely agree with. But here's where we see their slant. The next part in the presentation is about how trustworthy the management team is. And I mean, look at this. They say the company is in the hands of a strong, well-credentialed management team. We just read pages of reports with quotes from all three of these individuals that was talking about how they disagreed with Milton and how wrong he was. But the fact of the matter is, when this was going on, they didn't do hardly anything to stop it. They're trying to paint Milton as the entire problem and that it was everyone else doing a stand-up job, but that is far from the truth. The truth is that Nikola is made of many individuals, and while Milton was clearly doing illegal activities, nobody stood up to him. It's really annoying that they're painting this as a picture of Milton was doing everything bad, when we know without a doubt that at any point, the rest of the executive and management team could have put a stop to it instantly if they actually wanted to. It might not have been pretty, but with startups it happens fairly frequently, and especially when Milton is clearly breaking the law, then it should make the decision super easy for the rest of Nikola's team. They didn't say anything in my opinion because what he was doing, although illegal and morally reprehensible, it was getting massive results, and the team decided collectively to not stop him. In my mind, that makes the entire management and executive team accomplices in the deception of the public, not just Milton. But that's just me, what do you think? And the follow-up question is if you're a Nikola investor, if the team at Nikola was playing a role before in Trevor's lies, why do you feel comfortable trusting them now? Let me know in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for this video. If you liked what you saw, leave a like. If you loved it, consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. As always, huge shout out to my current Patreon members for supporting me and helping me make these videos. These people are awesome, and a lot of my video ideas actually come from their suggestions. All right, we'll leave things there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.